The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Unew Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Ask for Candy, 101 Ways to Make Your Love and Your Life Sweeter. I am Candace Harper, lovecoach.com, honey. I teach and inspire audacious intimacy to powerful, professional, grown women who want real relationships and seductive singlehoods. And I always say dating and relationships can be hard, but love, love is always easy. Now, you are probably listening to us maybe on armed radio, maybe through a smart device on your tune-in app. Or perhaps you're in the garden. You know I love the garden on armedradioglobal.com. Guess what? We're also now available on iHeartRadio. So if you have an Alexa, you can ask for candy. Maybe, just maybe, you are joining us right now live on Facebook. Now, full disclosure, new technology. I'm trying this whole thing called Be Live. I've got these two really special guests, so I'm about to introduce you. And we're trying to make it all work together. So hopefully, you know... It all works. <laughs> We're crossing fingers and hoping for the best. I know you guys who listen all the time, you'll bear with us and be patient. Now listen, the call-in number, if you have any questions during the course of the show, is 1-800-508-5431. And you can comment or question, send us questions live on Facebook. I think it should work, should work okay. We're just going to go with the flow of technology. And then you can also send us um, email questions at askforcandypodcast at gmail.com, which, you know, obviously we won't be able to answer them live, but we might come back later and, you know, be able to help you out. So, like I said, I'm Candice Harper, lovecoach.com. My talent is conversation. My passion is personal growth. My purpose is to teach and inspire radical self-acceptance in myself and others so that we can all have our best possible love life. And my guests tonight are doctors Heike and Jonathan Hudson, who I'm so, so excited about because as you all know, we are in the summer of sexploration. So I'm talking to relationship coaches, I'm talking to sex educators, I'm talking to all kinds of people who are in this conversation of love, like juicy, fabulous love. And I, I stumbled upon doctors Heike and Jonathan, and I'm so excited because I love meeting new people. And they're wonderful, and they're on the West Coast, which means we're, like, spreading our wings out and learning new things, <laughs> right? <laughs> now, let Crazy me tell California. You a little, huh, that's right, all about California. So let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Heike and Dr. Jonathan. Dr. Heike is a – now, tell me if I'm saying this right, Dr. Heike, a, a na- naturopathy? Naturopath. Naturopathy. Dr. Heike is a naturopathy clinical sexologist and one of San Diego's preeminent sex educators relationship coach and a somatic sexual healer and she's going to tell us all about what somatic sexual healing is has dedicated her life to helping women reclaim their inner radiant queen and embrace their sexuality and step fully into their passion and purpose and have incredible relationships i love Fantastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> right? In her 20 plus years of traditional, holistic, and alternative practices, she found that the one thing missing, or the one missing link for women's ultimate well being, which is loving ourselves, right? It's what we always talk about. It's the conversation we always have like, how do we get there? How do we get self accepted? So, together with her husband, Dr. Jonathan Hudson, they founded the Sextraordinary, SextraordinaryLiving.com, Sextraordinary Living and the Pleasure on Purpose Healing System, which is their own system that they created. And it offers a new paradigm of relationships and sexuality. So your clients, they come from around the world to experience extraordinary shifts in their relationships, sex and love lives, business and health. We're also trying to bridge that gap. So hopefully you guys will be able to help us do that too. I'm on this path to try to figure out how to bridge sexuality and how that works with money and all of that other stuff, Ooh, right? Okay. All connected. All right? connected. Yes. So Dr. Heike, Dr. Jonathan, tell us more about yourselves so we can get related, so maybe some personal things, how you got started, all of that good stuff. Self-intro. 
Well, how do we get started in sexual healing? I mean, that's not the Marvin Gaye song that we do. <laughs> <laughs> although, although sexuality in itself, obviously, between couples can be very healing, we have a very specific modality where we look into the body memory of, of past relationship pains, old trauma, especially sexual trauma with women, and programming, societal programming, church programming, that all those messages that we get when we're little kids, right? When we're when we're totally in like a almost a hypnotic state, where our brain is in theta waves between the ages of four and six. So the things we hear about ourselves, we really believe, you know, especially when it comes to sex. Don't do that. You're going to go to hell. There's all these little stories that we get. And so somatic means that we go into the body memory. There's quite a bit of science coming out now saying that the, the, the nebulous unconscious mind isn't really in your brain, it's in your body. And that's why we have cellular memory, right? We, we, we know what that is, a muscle memory, but we also carry all those memories from the past in our body. So oftentimes we go to, we go to psychologists, we go to life coaches, and we, we do a lot of the head work, but the next frontier is really getting into the body to unwind all of those old memories and giving people a, a safe place to shout and scream and cry and yell at their ex and yell at their mom, do all those things you never really got to do, but the body wanted to do so that we can bring the body back to what we call a place of being restored or in balance. And that's what helps. That's really what helps unwind all the tissue so people can have amazing love lives. Well, and then we'll take it a step further from our bodies to actually our sexuality. And that is really the root. This is what our bodies are made of. And there's so much confusion when it comes to sexuality. And I'm not even talking about sex, about just the energy and, mm -hmm. and, and what actually renews this body every day. You, you mentioned earlier money and finances, business, and how sexuality has to do with it. But it starts really with health. Like the more we run it, the more we embrace our sexuality just for ourselves, um, the, the more radiant we become and, and just rejuvenate over and over every day. Oh, I love all of that. It's and good. Now, here's the thing, too. Is, you know, as a coach myself, I'm always looking for new ways to, to um, I'd never heard of the somatic approach until I found you guys mm -hmm. or that there was a term for it. But I absolutely agree with you, like how we, we emotions. I use yoga in my practice because I feel like so much of that is a physical, you know, sure. I, and I love that you're, you're saying tapping into how to express themselves emotionally. Well, and definitely, definitely in our society, we're supposed to always be on top of the game, super balanced, quiet, calm, peaceful. Nice. And even with our partners, like, you know, it always has to be that even keel, and no matter how, we just have to get there. But that's not our truth. We do get upset and we do get sad. We, we have all these different emotions coming up. And the problem is if we can't express it, it's going to be stored somewhere in the body. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's an unexpressed emotion. And it happens basically on a daily basis, right? We always try to keep it calm and we really want to explode but we can't do it because it's a it's in society not accepted to be angry we all carry anger it's just one of all the many emotions that flow through us all day long and some obviously have more of some than others and to express that and you even know this in, in yoga right when you start actually stretching the fascia in certain positions all of a sudden tears come up or anger comes up, right? All of these emotions, all of a sudden, here they are. And even there, you can't just wail in class, right? <laughs> it's not acceptable. <laughs> or just stomp your feet. And, and the same happens actually in massage. We, we get massage and all of a sudden we think of a certain person or a certain situation. Or we, again, have an emotion coming up. But we don't take it from there to actually full expression meaning full release rather than okay a little bit okay let's roll some tears and make a funny face out of upset but that's about it and so um in order for us as women but also obviously men to come into a full expression 
it is to really express what's real what what is present right now and and to do some housekeeping meaning to just really purge all of that so that there's all the space for love for connection for intimacy um just the depth that we're all longing for that oftentimes is just cluttered and and what's happening is we've swallowed those emotions through our parents through every relationship we've swallowed the hurt we've swallowed the pain we've swallowed the anger and so as we step into new relationships we're bringing all that quote unquote baggage with us and so when somebody when when the when the new boyfriend or new girlfriend does something similar to the last time you were hurt you know what your ex did it starts to fire those emotions back up and so what would normally become a very simple thing let's say to become angry about that would normally pass very quickly it rages up and the more we suppress it it then rages up into alcoholism drug abuse domestic abuse it's when that stuff finally yeah disease huge my mom my mom is a i mean personal story just had a third of her stomach removed and the doctor walked in the room and said she had a very angry ulcer and he actually knows about somatic so i laughed I said she's been holding anger against her boss for 20 years and he goes I just took it out of her. And so it's that's how it's showing up too. We actually believe a lot of disease is created by the stuff we that people swallow, their truth basically. And so our goal is in order to get to a super healthy loving relationship to really be able to deal with all this stuff from our past so it's not present anymore. And then what Heike what Heike was talking about the ability to express emotions that doesn't mean we express it at each other that's another you know another one of the path too is when hike is angry she doesn't yell at me and you see so much of that relationships in in relationships people take it out on each other there's a somatic way to do it that can get it out of the body but in a healthy way plus using your partner or the punching yeah totally Absolutely. And you know, I love that you touched on the thing about disease because I talk about that all the time, the quantum phys physics of it. And how um and one of our our commenters says, Kenya, she says literally sick with secrets. You know, and even in the um addiction circles, they talk about you're only as sick as your secret. And your secrets are all that emotion, all of that anger, all that stuff that we're too ashamed to express, right? Yeah, totally. So, and and guess where all those secrets go? Right on our butts. And then our butts get big, and we wonder why we got big butts. It's because all of our secrets are there. <laughs> and around so the we, belly, the stress belly, right? The the the, the 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 truth gets swallowed in the belly, and then all and then all those see all the all the hidden stuff does really get stored in your butt because you don't see it, right? It's yeah. hidden even from yourself. So we sit on it. We sit on it. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. Now I gotta say hi to all the people that are signing in. I see Sonia is here. Sean is here. Dana. Rebecca, Happy Julia, Kenya, so many people, Angela, Jennifer, Lee, Beth, I want you guys to <laughs> interact with us during this conversation. I want you to feel free to ask, ask questions. Michael and D'Angelo and Brad is watching. So, you know all you people who are coming in, you can ask us questions. This is Dr. Heike and jo Dr. Jonathan Hudson. They're coming to us from San Diego with somatic sexual healing. Now, what I really want to get to, which overriding theme of the night is a conversation that I actually had with someone you know we sort of have have um find that I'm it's very easy to talk to this person so I'm probably watching so <laughs> I want to be better I want your truth I want your truth there comes the truth right <laughs> but here's the interesting conversation we had because in the course of this summer of sex exploration I'm you know trying different things tried a new modality the other day which was a uh, orgasmic meditation mm. talking about you know but one thing that i sort of had a breakthrough around was that growing up and you guys touched on it a little bit about conditioning <laughs> growing up me and my sisters we were always sort of warned against male sexuality so that if someone was attracted to you or hitting on you that they were up to something that you know men were just out there to use you that you know it's not to be trusted men only want sex all of that stuff was very much conditioned into us and and you know even though i consider myself a self aware person i can look back through you know my adulthood my young adulthood to now and know that that conditioning definitely impacted the way i showed up in relationships right so i was talking to um this person and he mentioned that his thing when when 
For me, when men are overtly sexual, it's like automatic resistance. Whoa, like, what are you up to? For him, he said that what he got was when women are overly sexual, it's automatically she's promiscuous. Where's she been? You know what I mean? So I want us to get into this conversation and maybe help <clears throat> heal some of the thinking that sexuality breeds mistrust. Like I think money sometimes breeds mistrust or what we, you know, our beliefs around it. I think that, that it's very common and ordinary for, for people's thoughts about sex to breed a mistrust that is sabotaging relationships. Who I want to talk to start? about that, right? <laughs> Who wants to start? I want to talk about that a little bit. Well, the, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the, the, biggest thing, the biggest thing about mistrust is, I kind of mentioned it before, it's that everything is hidden. And so when it comes to sexuality, it's not an open conversation. The same with money, right? It's in the shadows. We don't talk about it, although everyone has it. We um, have a lot of confusion around it, what it actually means to us and what is okay and what is not okay and how much is okay. And, and how, you know, like you said, women, if they're too sexy, they're called all different names. Um, men, of course, it's the who they are. Um, but the mistrust actually comes from that we're not having open conversations. Like who of us is actually talking to, for example, women to their girlfriends? It's like, what do you think about sex? What is the experience with sex? What do you love? Like what tools, what, what, what are you doing that turns you on? Or, or what is it what turns you off? And even all the way into a relationship, we're not really talking with our partners. It's kind of like all this unspoken stuff rather than bringing it out and even as much as you know a man approaching us and say hey you're coming on to strong and i am just you know it's turning me off rather than you know we turn away or we shrink or we we move out and and especially as women we don't speak up right that's the good girls and it's like our no and our <laughs> stop and ours like you know here back off you really got to come into into your own sexuality. It's kind of like ironic that we're so afraid of male sexuality. And if we would only bump up ours, then it wouldn't actually come on so strong. It's, it's like a, it's, it's almost like a natural protection that if, if we are like this, then of course there's more of the predator and everything rather than boom, here I am. I own my body and my sexuality. And then we can say, yes, no, we speak our truth. And this is one of the big things of, you know, what I teach women. It's, it's this whole embodiment. And the moment we embrace our sexuality fully, then our mirror out there does actually not react that much anymore. I mean, if no, if, if, if men wouldn't be like called or whatever and seen as the sexual ones and women are not, who's going to keep humanity going? <laughs> I mean, there, there's, there's <laughs> like, we have to be sexual. <laughs> right. So I'm, I'm going right now in the bigger picture. And of course, there's so much that is not okay in the Me Too movement and all of the things that are being done right now towards um, respect and honor of each other but from my own experience it starts with within how much do you respect yourself how much you honor yourself because for me is the way I treat myself is also how I'm treated out there and to go to, to take that concept from a psychological level a lot of it has to do with the programming that specifically women get growing up just like you said if you know, you're a slut or you're promiscuous, I mean, that starts in elementary school, your parents, the church, certainly through high school where you're called a slut. If, 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 even if the guys think you sleep around, they call you a slut because it's kind of a fun thing to do with the guys. Wear red that, lipstick. Yeah, exactly. And that, <laughs> that, that, that story <laughs> carries with a woman. And so she starts to think, she starts to think of sexuality, of her, of her own sexuality as being something to condemn. And so, of course, men are going to appear as these wild sexual ones as the bad guy because, you know, it's classic projection in a sense. 
you're looking at the, a part of me as a woman that can't have what that is. And then I, so I blame that, right? Yeah, that's his classic projection theory. Now, men, on the other hand, as, as Heike talked about, we like to say there's a shadow masculine. And that, and that masculine has been running the planet and, and, and has created a mess. And there, there really are a lot, you know, we, we, you said what your, what, what your friend said to you. These new men that are running more of their masculine energy, staying in their masculine, but really coming from the heart as well, so they're connected with both, are showing up in a space where I don't look ever at a woman who loves her sexuality and loves to have sex. I don't care how many partners she's been with. I'm happy she's a slut because by the word slut, I mean she's a fully empowered woman owning her sexuality. That's who I actually want to be with. I want to be with the wild one. I want to be with a woman that doesn't have, you know, any any holdbacks in the bedroom. I want her to dive deep into her sexuality. So the word slut to me is a is a badge of honor. But you're right. It's even as even as boys, we're we're told that oh, she's dirty or she's a slut. Although I got to tell you, as a man and and being in those conversations when I was young, that was never a bad thing. That means we, that that just <laughs> meant we were going to get lucky. <laughs> we wanted her at the party. <laughs> I hear that. No, but let me ask you this. And, you know, just, just for anybody who's listening who also came from that conditioning, what about the thinking that when men are in that, that space of like, oh, yeah, it's great, she's a slut, but it's just great for right now. When I'm, totally. Yeah. Like when I'm thinking in terms of a relationship or someone that I want to, you know, take care of and be with, is it, is it that same, do I still want somebody who's... I, that, embra I, I, that embracing I, I, of their sexuality. I can only speak for myself and a lot of the men I know by saying, again, we want a woman who has great sexual knowledge, you know, the high priestess knowledge in the bedroom, because this is a different conversation, but it is through her sexuality that she cracks my heart open and takes me higher to see God. And the only way, the only way through that path is having a fully turned on experienced woman. To answer your question, yes, I hear you. And that's part of the programming, too, that goes back to men should only marry a virgin. I mean, where do we hear that story? We live with that. Our, our religion in this country is premised upon a, a man born to a virgin. And so, we, yes, of course, it starts very early on that we should have a virgin, clean, pure woman. And that's where the story comes from. And so many of these stories just run behind the scenes in the subconscious. We're not even aware of them. Now, I, I have people who are commenting in. Kenya says, fake communication is exhausting in time. With, no one is willing to be vulnerable and open and honest. And I think that speaks back to what you were talking about, Heike. So I think the question here is, I, I totally agree with you guys. Like, the idea of actually communicating about our sexuality and just being definitely um, powerful. And I think that when you have a level of self-awareness, you... But what about for someone who does not or never has. I mean, I find myself, as much as I study personal growth and am a coach, I still find myself um, hesitating or kind of struggling with just being flat about things like what I want sexually or how I feel, you know, how I want to express myself. So what is your advice if someone comes, male or female, and yeah, I want to have an honest about what I really want, but I'm afraid to because that person... So might not know what to do with it or, you know, for whatever mm. reason. They that is actually the start of the conversation. I would love to have an open conversation, but I am afraid of it. There's your vulnerability. To me, any time that we don't want to talk about things, why don't we first start with, we're feeling really uncomfortable right now, even having this conversation. I'm scared. Right? So um, we teach a lot around authentic communication and just, Put it out there first, not even what you want to talk about, rather than, oh, I'm just really feeling right now this because this is really hard for me to talk about it. And, you know, th there's only one way out, and it's actually through, meaning starting these conversations. And it's so funny, when we, whenever we go to dinners and um, people hear what who we are, we kind of say, oh, we're offline. We're not talking about sex tonight. We're not working tonight. <laughs> and we're not working. And the moment people hear what we're doing and what we're about, uh, not even then, but it's it's always there because once it's open, 
there's such a desire actually to talk about it and the way I see sexuality um, it's really life force energy it is like food and so I make often the analogy let's just talk about sexuality like food what recipes do you have what spices <laughs> do you have in the kitchen what tools are you using and what are you cooking up and how do you keep it fresh and we can actually have the same conversation that we have around food around sexuality and the only way really to get there is to get started and it is um it is really to me what i'm seeing the, the new personal growth is actually sexual self-discovery so it's not even about the other one first it is about it is my own body and 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 what i get to do with it what turns me on, what brings me pleasure all the way to orgasm i know my anatomy i know anything about my sexuality um because knowledge is power right and so that brings that confidence in and today the internet has so many options to learn anything and everything about it so start the conversation with yourself to get more comfortable and and to and to answer your question a little bit i mean hike and nailed it with be vulnerable and express the fact that you're scared to have the conversation the other thing is for each of you in a relationship to look at your own triggers and understand when you're when you're upset by something or or your, I guess what I'm getting to is know what your partner's weak points are. If they've been abandoned in the past, if they've been cheated on in the past, if, if they've been called weird in the past, these are all part of the conversation because if I go to Heike and say, hey, I, you know, I would love to have a threesome sometime, and she has a history of feeling not good enough, you know, feeling like a, 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 her other partner always wanted to cheat on her, all of those things are going to surface behind the scenes. And so when she says or screams, I mean, my ex-wife threw a glass at me years ago and I just tried to have this conversation, but it was because of her past that threw the glass. It wasn't the actual conversation. And so the more, the first thing we can do with ourselves is look at what happened in the past and, and, and own that side of the street. We, you know, we always talk about keeping our own side of the street clean. And so it's self-awareness that if she comes to me with anything, and I have an overreaction. I may not be able to do it in the moment, but certainly within an hour or so when the cortisol cut dies down, I'm able to come back and say, you know what? That really had nothing to do with that question. That had to do with something that happened to me 20 years ago. That Calling that out all by itself is, is oftentimes enough to, to separate yourself from it and then be able to go back into the conversation in, in a healthy way. But that conversation, you know, it is, it is so important because as men, we are not mind readers of what you want in bed. Do we like sex as men? Hell yes. Are we about... Women too. Yeah, but women too. Do, do, do we think about more than sex? Absolutely. I mean, there, there, there is so much more to our life. But I want to be the best lover I can be for her. So I am going to be fine-tuning my sex skills all the time. And she does the same <laughs> for me. Of it. And it, what I love mainly about what I heard in both of what you shared is that, um, you know, just the vulnerability piece is so important. And that I'm noticing from like the comments, like Lisa's open communication and building, having trust heightens emotional attachment and increases the physical bond. Like, you know, this is all about the vulnerability piece. Yep. You know, and, I, and I think it's the reason that we even go into this business in the first place. It's like, I know for me, that was a big challenge always because I was so used to being you know, the, the do it for myself survival girl that, you know, it was all this protective stuff that kept me from, from wanting to share that with anybody, yes, but not exactly. knowing that that's what was exactly standing in my way with developing intimacy. I don't want to say what's really going on. I don't want to even what Heiko was saying about opening the conversation with, oh, this is not comfortable for me. Like to say, this is not comfortable for me. You know, that's, I totally agree with that. Like that's totally what it takes. It's that open access to vulnerability. And, yeah. as, men, and, and as men in the post Me Too movement, it's even more challenging because, you know, if we, if we pay attention to the news and the media and, what, and, and, and the feminist movement, we sound like a real bunch of bad guys, right? And, yeah, oh, and definitely. So, and so if you're, <laughs> if you're halfway, at least, on the path to, being, to, to wanting to not be that guy, 
we step into this, oh, shoot, so, you know, we, we, if I tell her she's pretty, is she going to think I'm creepy? I mean, that we have a lot of stuff going on in our heads now, too, because we don't want to be that guy. And yet, at the, at, and yet at the same time, women are asking, where are all the men, right? And so it's kind of like sometimes our balls are getting cut off. And so it takes a very, I, I call it walking through the fires of Me Too, because you have to be able as a man to understand the reason for it and what women are asking for. And that is to step up and be in what, what we can call the divine masculine, be, be in that place where you're still very much a man, but you're cognizant not to be running that excessive, wild, rapist, take me, take the planet, ruin everything energy to that typical masculine way of doing things. And, and so it is very challenging in today's world to, to even walk across a dance floor and ask a woman to dance. I work with a lot of men that are just rather terrified right now. They don't know. They don't want to be that guy. And you want to talk about another big mask. That's when they turn into Mr. Nice Guy. They show up in this fake I'm not sexual, I'm not a creep, and boring, <laughs> right? And then you're like, dude, I don't want date two because he didn't bring his umph with him. And so it is, there's, there's so many different layers to this conversation, and I love having them all. Absolutely, and I think that's beautiful what you said because I think, you know, as a culture, we have to be so careful not to negate our, our humanness while we're being, you know, and that's not to invalidate people who have been victims. It's, no, it's all. all valid. But yeah. by the same token, like you said, we can't villainize all the totality of male sexuality any more than we can, you know, uh, blame an entire race of people for how one. So, you know, I think the question would be then, how do we access the, the, because I know a lot of it stems around fear. Like we're a very fear-based society, right? Yes. So now with this Me Too movement and having had all of these women be victimized and all of these men be uh, power predators, you know, there's this thing where it's like any little indication. I've, I, I saw it on the news. Now I think anything that happens in my real life is going to be like what's in the news. So I'm, I'm walking in fear, right? So what would you guys say to anybody who is just like, you know, staunch about uh, being fearful about male sexuality, fearful of their own sexuality? And I know this is kind of a, a younger woman's issue, but older women too, I think. So if, if you're walking around kind of in fear a little bit, then you're not going to be um, as accepting of, let's say, men that you meet that are... Uh, flirtatious or sexual or things. What what would you guys say is good advice for a woman? I'm not going to be a victim. I'm not. Well, fear only gets smaller when you get closer to it, and you know we try to avoid it. We try to run away from it. We try to not look at the subject. We try to sugarcoat it. We try all kinds of things, and in that, it actually gets bigger. And, and that's with any kind of fear, right? It gets smaller the closer you get to it and you actually go right through it. Now, of course, it's easier said than done. And yet my, my answer is actually, again, the same thing. It's like I believe that we as women are so afraid of our own sexuality because it is so freaking powerful. Mm -hmm. and, yes. <laughs> and that is the actual fear. Like that fire and that passion and that wild and chaotic and messy and all of what comes with it, um, take it to yourself first. And, and that is where I coach women a lot around. It's literally sexual self-discovery. So even looking at your fears and where's the program coming from? What did my parents tell me? And, and what did the church tell me? And all of that. But then to see, okay, I'm taking one step and this feels good. And okay, I'm still alive. I'm taking another step. So it really, like with anything else, it does start with yourself. It's really not about anyone out there yet before you know who you are, not just as a spiritual being, but as a sexual being, because those two are the yin and yang, the masculine and feminine within. It is just the balance that you create there. So the fear is really of your body. And, and I want to even, you know, give more detailed tips. It's like how many women have actually pulled out a mirror and looked at their beautiful vulva? Face it. <laughs> That's a great question. Right? right? 
so, pleasantly took me by surprise. Go ahead. Exactly. So this is our <laughs> second <laughs> face. It literally is our second face, right? Here's here's this beautiful. one because also our genitals all look different. Uh, and that is a huge stretch, although you're not going to die. And, of course, you're going to do it by yourself. And and to just be there and, and witness yourself, your other, your deeper, your most potent, beautiful, sacred, powerful part of you. And what would that bring all out? So now, sorry, Johnny, then I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to let you go ahead. But I'm, I'm thinking, you know, as someone who has has done mirror work with my vulva, <laughs> maybe TMI, but I'm sharing now. I actually <laughs> totally see how that. I mean, I've never done it in a way where I was I was thinking, uh, you know, probably more in a clinical way. But I, you know, it, it, it inspires me to want to go back and actually uh, see how it does sort of put you in touch with your own, you know, all that shame stuff and all of that, you know about it being dirty parts down there and all of that stuff. Like, I think with an awareness of, I'm looking at this to appreciate it. I, I, I see that in this moment as access to more self-acceptance, access to more like, okay with my purpose. Yeah, I'm yeah. okay. Yes. I love yeah, that. Yeah, Thank you. exactly. And, and I even want to take it further to anything that has to do with sexuality when you put one word in front of it, everything changes. And the word is sacred. It's my sacred sexuality. It's my sacred vulva. It's, it's my sacred genitals. It's, when you do that, you have that shift because we do want both. It, it is, it is when, 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 mm-hmm, when the right. sacredness and the spirituality comes together with the sexuality. That's when, that's actually to what we women are looking for in particular. We don't want just sex. I mean, we do, but it's not the fulfilling soul connecting sacred sex that we're actually looking for, like the five star gourmet sex, right? Rather than the McDonald's. So to just really make this whole and complete. And so when you do this, um, and I'm sure you're going to go there with your mirror at one point, and the listeners hopefully too, you really say, wow, this is the most sacred part. And there's no, like, no other face is like that. And there's no comparison because that's what we women do too, right? My nose is too big or my cheeks are too whatever. You yourself up and so every sacred vulva is gorgeous in her own way because that's the next step because we always think oh my lady are too big or this or that or whatever it is and they're really no exactly that's what we do all the time with our bodies right they're they're never perfect (laughs) Pike is talking about changing your conversation with yourself because you, you know we do beat ourselves up so much especially women but I also ask going back to your question how do we change that idea of what we think about the world and and it it, it, it you got to turn the question around because when you walk around as a woman thinking that all men are x then that is what is going to show up in your movie when you walk out the front door that is what that's who you're going to attract because you are basically your 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 reality is proving to you your beliefs and so if I, wa- if I walk out to a bar and I think that all women are X, that's who I'm going to see for the evening. If I walk in with a whole different attitude or in, uh, sw- switching it back around, if, and I'll, I want to give you a great example of this. Heike had a coaching um, a- event for her women. She had about 30 women in, in the room. And it was the one time that I got to actually be there. I was getting ready to come in and do a little segment. I hadn't been there for any of the other classes. I stood outside the door and Heike said, ask the women, what do you think of the feminine? And they all, you know, creative, fun, dance, sexy, all those great words. And I had a smile on my face. And then she said, what do you think of men? And the they, masculine. well, the masculine, but in that case, it was men. And it was, and, and, and they said, liars, cheaters, mean, cold, stoic. I think the one positive word I heard was provider. I'm like, oh, yeah, structured. <laughs> structured. structured. And so I actually, my, my heart really hurt that day. I, I walked into this, to these women. They didn't know I was there. 
And I was just kind of stunned. I'm like, you know, this is what you think of men. Is it any wonder you're all single? And like it goes back to childhood, snips and snails and puppy dog tails and women are nice and everything nice. Yeah, yeah. To think, yeah. And it does keep us single. Yeah, it totally does. And so, you know, part of that day was to reshift what you think of the masculine. And, and I think that, and, but it, I'm not blaming women here. This shows up for men too. When men think that women are sluts or and it, when, and of course, that's what the, with a different definition of it or, or the women are all, you can't trust them, you can't trust or, them or, or they're sexually they shut down or, or they're emotionally chaotic, which is true, but that's a different. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> it's my job. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> then that, then that's, what's going to show up in the world. Right. Uh, that, is that, is that, is that why I, I believe women are emotionally chaotic? And uh -huh. you got, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Ah. You just, you just learned your own, you just took your own medicine. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I know how to handle this one. It's okay. I, I provide the container for her to be wild. I love it. Y'all are bringing the realness. I love it. <laughs> but I, I, Jonathan, I think you're right on the money. And that's something that I myself can soapbox about for days. Like we, what we believe, what our contexts are is, is decide. It's what it makes certain things it's what impacts our lives and it's what we attract yeah. our, our you know mental state our vibration if we're vibrating on you know don't trust men then we're not going to meet a single man that can be trusted or we're vibrating no. on you know women are chaotic <laughs> every lady that comes along is going to be crazy right absolutely so start to sh start to shift your beliefs and say there are good men out there and i'm going to meet one or, or there are or even if, if you're in a relationship, really start to take gratitude and see the positive in your man. The, the, just those mind shifts, when they start to shift your beliefs, everything starts to change. Which that, that's a perfect segue into um, with couples, because I have couples that are listening who have just gotten into relationships. While, and there's one person that I'm thinking of who, you know, is having a lot of challenges in marriage right now. Um, I just wanted to get you guys to take on you know, when you do couple work and you, how do you guys handle it? Let's say you have two people who have a very long history, exactly what we're talking about, judgments and criticism about each other. And you know how one, you know, the longer you know someone, the bigger the case you can build against that person. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> right? So how, how do you, and you know, for people that are listening out there who are in that, that situation where they do have a long-term built up baggage and it's about the person that they're what do you think are the first couple of steps or how do you think they can trying to heal that that's all yours girl <laughs> she's, she's, she's the relationship coach i'm the body yeah <laughs> well you know it's all about house cleaning right and there are things that we do need to talk about um where there's resentment i mean there's there's all these different things in the history um first there is things that have hurt in the past where we do carry resentment. Um, but then there's also all the boxes that we have built, right? The judgments around the partner. He or she is like that, always like that. Does always like this. Like we don't even give our partner room for growth anymore because mm -hmm. we kind of have them put in the box, a lot of labels on there, and they can't even change even if they wanted to. So really looking at that, how fair is it when I look at my partner, even with 15, 20, whatever years of experience together, um, and to not say, hey, but we're all growing. We are all, ideally, we are changing constantly and evolving, ideally, and we're doing our personal growth. Um, it's just, when I work with couples, there might be things that need to be said and expressed, and it's actually good to have someone as a referee, so to speak, uh, and to really bring some things out for the last time. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, one more time, and we're going to just burn it, and we're just going to release it. But even more so, and you know this too from coaching, we're not going all the way back. We're making a decision today where we are and where do we want to go. Like there is cleanup there, and and once again, I I just have to say, somatics is one of the best things. We work with couples here too, coming to just let it all rip individually, 
on our table by themselves and then and then it's done and it's it's purged right it is a purging so it's sometimes it's really good to have some help there or to really establish some rules okay we're going to light a candle right now we're going to create sacred space you get to talk like 15 minutes or 20 minutes however long it's going to take i'm not going to interrupt you you let it all out and then we let it go then time. we let it go i'm not going to even comment on it or justify myself you just share and then and then it's it's done and we're just thanking each other for letting this out but then there comes this time where we say now is the time like we're making a commitment today and we're going to see each other with fresh eyes and we're going to release forget forgive the past whatever it takes and we're also looking at where do we want to go what do we want to create what are our needs our wants our desires our fantasies our whatever and let's talk about this like in a business relationship right i want this and that and that and a little bit of this and and i really want less of that and how about you and and we start negotiating and ideally in in this agreement let's keep the emotions out we come to the table and say we're here we're we're making a new start mm -hmm. and and let's figure out how we create it because here's the thing when it comes to relationship and sexuality we get to create it and we don't do that right it's like we meet and we fall in love and all we know is okay our goals are always in the future of okay we love each other well let's move together let's get married let's have children let's get our house and the car and the mortgage and all of that um let's do our careers and then, get divorced. And, and then yeah and then a lot of times like there's always the next but then it ends right once we have all of this we're like wow this is a lot to take care of and now we don't even have time for ourselves and what happens is we've never sat at the beginning and this is what Jonathan and I have done because we didn't even want to do relationships anymore. Never said at the beginning of what do we want? How do we wish to create this? Like and we still, for we what still works for me personal, what works for him personal. And let's put this all together. And what are we going to make out of this? And we're going to decide how we live our relationship, how we live our sex life, and how we create this, rather than, okay, this is what society teaches us, and, and that's what we have to do, and we've got to look like this, it got to look like that, and we have, like, you know, from even monogamy to monogamish to polyamorish, like, all of this, like, bring it all there, and make it your own, because there's no judgment of what really we are supposed to do, rather than, like any restaurant, right? Again, we have a personal flavor and and variety. And so that's what I see with couples, even that are for a long time. So the ones that are not in relation, please start to do this at the beginning. Just be aware. You create your relationship and experience. You create your sexual experience. So communication, transparency, and going from here into where do we want to go? And what I'm going to say is have more sex. Now, that may come from a man, but I will tell you that I know a lot of couples um, that get stuck in their heads trying to figure all this stuff out. And when you're in your heads and we're always communicating and arguing, we're not having a lot of sex. Sex is the intimate connection between us. It is the, it is the fuel for our relationship. It's the fuel for our fire. You ever notice how when you just shut up and put your bodies together and see what happens after you make love it's such a beautiful place to be in when you make we say that word so easy to make love when your relationship is in need of love you need to make more love and that doesn't come from talking it, do, it doesn't come from the head making love is the energy created through sensuality it doesn't have to be when i say sexuality i don't always mean intercourse it can just be holding each other, but again, shutting up the, 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 the brain and the mind and letting the bodies communicate with each other and come back to and create the reason we're together in the first place. I'm not with her to argue with her. I, I, I'm with her because I love our physical connection and our energetic connection. And if that's missing, there is no fuel for this beautiful relationship as a you know, the way we teach it is it's Heike and Jonathan, and there's this third thing 
called uh, not even our marriage. It's just called our relationship that needs to be nurtured consistently like a little baby. And you know what I love, especially is how, how what you're saying goes so hand in such a big believer in no matter what we endeavor, that there has to be an end goal, a purpose or a vision that we're creating. And the creativity piece is so important because I feel like so many people that we are creating this life. Like it's what we say it's going to be, right? And Jonathan, I think you're exactly right. Like like just you know, once once the, like Heike said, the purpose is in place and the goal is in place, then, then you're right. Like all we have to do is just love each other through it and the ups and downs will come but when you when we're both uh you know clear about what it is we're creating then we're we're able to do that when we're not clear about what we're creating it's like my bumblebees like <laughs> yeah, completely. right like it just it works so hand in hand. always that's one message that i always want to give it glad that you guys touched that it's just so important whether it's you on your own creating something partnership to work out to know exactly what you're doing what you're there for so even for this interview like we i sent you the rundown we talked we know what our goal and our intention is we've had an amazing conversation <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's a good example it. right there that that was an example of the masculine and feminine right there you did such a good job so the masculine was the structure of the emails and the points yes. and then the feminine just went Woo! <laughs> <laughs> beautiful Absolutely. What I hate is that we always, like, we're all, almost out of time. This hour goes by so fast, and it was, like, such a juicy, fantastic hour. And I am so grateful to you guys for, you know, just being game and being willing and rolling with the technical punches and just, you know, coming and sharing yourselves in this way. And I want to give you guys an opportunity to let everyone know how they can find you, you know, what, what you can offer and who you, know, you normally work with. And, and all. Go ahead and, and let them know how they can get with you. Well, you can contact us and get some cool free gifts. I think we have four or five different free gifts on there talking about masculine feminine balance, how to create an evening of sacred sexuality, how to ask for what you want in and outside of the bedroom. That's the biggest one. We have a whole MP3 on there with a demo of how to ask your partner for anything. And that, that is in a beautiful, safe space. So you want to go to www.pleasureupgrade.com. That's where our gifts are. The company is called Sextraordinary Living. And Heike is really doing a great deal of coaching right now with women when it comes to getting in their body and, sexuality. and, and, and around sexuality. So that, that between her and the somatics is really where our focus is. Yeah. So for me, it's all, it's all about the feminine empowerment, sexual empowerment, really coming from our heads. Like we've all done the work right here and in our hearts and, and to really get all the way into our body and, and really knowing who we are as sexual beings. And that's what I do offer for women. And when you get on our site, you will have the opportunity to actually schedule a call. If you do have questions around that and how do I get there and what can we do to really get you fully into your body and talk about sex in a safe place. I love it. It's so fantastic. So I did put pleasureupgrade.com up on it. Also, um, Dr. Heike and Dr. Jonathan, well, I think we are added as Facebook. Um, and they have questions. They have questions in the comments. Right? Sure. Because, We'd love to. I love Facebook. I love answering questions. Send me a, I, I think we're friends on there, but if not, send me a request. I'll be happy to be on there. Awesome. Okay. So definitely, you guys, reach out to them. Thank you so much, you guys. I'm going to do some. Stuff. I don't know. Like, here's the thing. <laughs> here's where the, uh, the the lack of knowledge in the technology comes in. I don't know if I can sign you guys off. If you guys want to hang out a few more minutes before global people um, sign off, if you don't mind. Sure, I don't want to sign you to guys say, off and then shut the whole thing down. We're <laughs> happy to say, don't, no, for, don't, don't forget, Heike's coming back. Oh, that's right. Yes. And Heike is definitely coming back. I can't wait. We're going to have like the very, very feminine and Dr. Heiken comes back. <laughs> and I love just, just you know, nice, I'm, nice to men. Right? <laughs> oh, my God, we love men. I know you we love, love men. Yeah. Dr. Heike, right? We're, we're right here. We're... <laughs> <laughs> so, also, you guys, you know that you can reach out to me, uh, my single girls out there. I do my 45 day intensive coaching program. 
for women over 35 discover their purpose and attract a soulmate to support them in fulfilling it purpose is not to partner partnership is for your purpose it's mm. the secret art of seductive singlehood now as always i give you my three ways to make love and life sweeter this week here are my three ways number one explore partnership in in other areas of your life partnership you know at work partnership in your families where you vulnerable and have open conversations maybe ask for help a little bit let people help you out with some stuff just explore it see how it goes you don't have to be a lone wolf my single ladies out there um number two write down some of your own beliefs and paradigms and question them so you know we we talked a lot in this conversation so good about beliefs and you know, what we already think what we already know and how that impacts our relationship our abilities to partner and couple so write some down you don't have to like resist them. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to fix yourself. You're not broken. Just write down some of those beliefs and paradigms and see if you can sort of explore what works, what doesn't work. Number three, just take a second to just notice the moment that you're in. Self moments here and there. If you're someone especially who's constantly busy, constantly going, constantly doing, be willing to be present in your love that Dr. Heike mentioned vulva with a mirror because that, that's a very good time to be present in the moment <laughs> <laughs> you never know where that moment will take you all right <laughs> so we're yeah. gonna keep continuing on this journey of the summer of sex exploration you know you can email me ask for candy podcast at gmail.com we got what seconds left and as i always say until next time never forget that you are a love machine if you ever start to feel like you aren't getting the love you need start making more and then ask for candy I'm Brady, Radio Global Peeps. I love you so much. Thank you for listening in. My Facebook Live people, I see that you have 